This is the closest thing I have to an IU shirt, so let's just roll with it and talk about Breaking Away's 40th anniversary coming up in a week. Hey, I'm Amy and welcome or welcome back and today I will be checking Breaking Away off the 1001 movie checklist. If you do not know what the 1001 movie checklist or 1001 movie challenge is, it is basically a challenge I have given myself to check every single film off the 1001 movies you must see before you die book. So far I have checked 176 films off the list. If you want to know more, you can check out the playlist up there with every single film I have checked off so far and an intro video explaining everything. As always, let's get started with a short summary. Dave and his working class friends Cyril, Moocher, and Mike spend their post high school days in Bloomington, Indiana, sparring with snooty students from the local university, chasing girls, and, in Dave's case, dreaming of competitive bicycle racing. The four friends face opposition from all corners as they decide to make Dave's dreams come true in the university's annual bicycle endurance race. The reason that I really, really wanted to check this one off when I did, because it's 40th anniversary, is on July 20th, and today is the 14th, so it's a little bit a ways off, but this film was set in and filmed in Bloomington, Indiana which is not that far from where I grew up. It is half of my alma mater. I went to IUPUI and it is Bloomington, Indiana's home to Indiana University, which is the IU part of IUPUI. It's also where like half of my dad's side of the family went to school, including my dad. My dad actually was a freshman at IU when this was being filmed. So he was around the age of all of the guys in this movie, which is kind of cool. He even did race in the Little Five, which is the climactic scene that this entire film leads up to when he was a junior in college, which I think is super cool. And I tried to spot him. If I did, here is like a still frame of probably a very blurry image of him in the crowd during the Little Five race, which the Little Five is short for the Little 500, which is a take on the Indy 500, which you don't know what the Indy 500 is. Just gonna keep talking about my hometown here for a hot second. The Indy 500 is when Indy cars go around a racetrack for 500 miles. But anyways, we're talking about breaking away, which is not about car racing about bicycle racing. The Little Five is a bicycle race. So let's talk about the actual movie. Some things I liked about this are the pacing of the film. While I have issue with some of the bits of story and the way that the story is told throughout the film or some of the things that they add to the story, which I'll talk about later, I do like the way it's paced. It does reflect the way Dave and Mike and Cyril and Mooch all live. It's very slow paced, kind of lackadaisical, the same way all four of the main characters live their lives. They just want to chill and hang out and spend this year in between their high school graduation and when they have to really figure out what they want to do next. For all of them it means different things, but that is just just for the first three quarters of the movie. The first two acts are very lazy, very slow, and it really starts to ramp up once we get to the little five race because that is the big climactic scene because somehow this bicycle race holds all the tension and you just can't not watch what is happening. I also like that it adds a little bit of tension between the four friends because they are all starting to go their separate ways. Dave wants to become a famous cyclist and that's really kind of his main focus but it's also focused on girls and trying to please his dad and get his dad's attention. Worthless Evelyn. I tell you I die of shame every time I see him. God damn Shh. lazy freeloader. Most of the time the only thing he really thinks of is cycling and it, it comes to the detriment of people around him. Like when he gets a semi-truck driver pulled over by the police for helping pace him or when his dad stalls out a car while test driving it for a family. Oh damn. <laughs> you know what I did? I, I think I put premium gas in this baby by mistake. <laughs> It hates expensive gas. Mike wants to get out of Bloomington and be known as more than just a cutter, which is what the university kids call townies. But he doesn't really seem to want to do it when push comes to shove. He's comfortable in his life the way it's going and he kind of gets some energy out of being antagonistic to the university students but when it comes to actually stepping up to them he just falters and doesn't do it. Or when he does it ends up in a detriment to himself. <sighs> And I believe some of his hesitation in leaving Bloomington and becoming 
more than what he is because he wants to keep the group together. He's always talking about if one of them finds a job, they can't go work at that job because that job probably wouldn't take all four of them. And he gets upset and kind of bullies Mooch into quitting the job that he has just because none of them are working at that job. There are also points where Mike seems to want to be the Marlboro Man and he just doesn't really have the grit for it. There's a point in this film where the group are sitting on a hill watching the IU football players practice and Mike talks about missing the days where he played football in high school and he can't even light the cigarette that he keeps stuck between his lips because he wants to stay in shape even though he's not trying to do anything at all. You know, I used to think I was a really great quarterback in high school. Still think so too. Can't even bring myself to light a cigarette because I keep thinking I gotta stay in shape. You know what really gets me though? I mean, here I am, I gotta live in this stinking town, and I gotta read in the newspapers about some hotshot kid, new star of the college team. And Cyril, all he wants to do is prove himself to his father. I was sure I was gonna get that scholarship. My dad, of course, was sure that I wouldn't. When I didn't, he was really understanding, you know? He loves to do that. He loves to be understanding when I fail. <laughs> That's okay, Cyril, I understand. I feel like his storyline is probably the weakest one. It doesn't have the most fulfillment for me. In the end, they win the race, and you see Cyril standing there looking around for his father, while Dave hugs his parents and Mike hugs his brother, and Mooch hugs Nancy. Which, speaking of, Mooch's whole storyline through this is just trying to get a job to earn money so he and Nancy can get married, and eventually moves to Chicago with his dad. And speaking of fathers, there is an interesting dynamic between Dave and his father Rick. A lot of it is Dave trying to prove himself to his father but not really. I don't know there's this kind of weird dynamic between the two of them where Dave is just happy-go-lucky and his father pretty much despises everything that Dave is about especially when Dave is putting on that really fake Italian, not necessarily fake, but when Dave is putting on his Italian accent and uh, his everything Italian. He's talking in Italian. He's singing in Italian. He's dressing not yeah. He's kind of dressing Italian. He's playing records and he wants to be an Italian cyclist and Rick just hates everything about Italians. He has at least for the first like 30 minutes of the movie a very heavy racism towards Italians until a incident happens when Dave is racing with the Italian cycling team that comes to visit Indianapolis. <laughs> And Dave finds out that not everybody is as nice as he thinks they are. And that's when him and his father get a little bit closer. But there are times when Rick just pretends not to know who Dave is because he is so embarrassed by him. Buongiorno, Papa. Come stai? Friend of yours? But there are a couple issues that I have with this film. Mainly, it is that there are scenes that don't necessarily need to be in there that could have been taken out. There's like storyline, whole storylines that don't need to be in here that could have been taken out and expanded on some of the other storylines. Particularly, they could have taken out the whole storyline with Dave's parents having a baby or like trying to have a baby and you see that Dave's mother is pregnant at the very end of the film. It's just a very random couple of sequences where they show this. They could have taken this out and expanded this other relationship that is within the film that I think probably could have been expanded a little bit more, which is Dave's relationship with Kathy. They really only show their relationship growing over two or they only show it over three separate occasions. When Dave first sees Kathy, takes her notebook and delivers it to her, and then when he is serenading her with Cyril, and then finally when they are out to dinner at the bowling alley slash diner, I feel like their breakup at the very end and then her coming to tell him that she's moving to Chicago just like Moocher is, there wasn't enough buildup in their relationship to make their breakup and their whole storyline makes sense when he does eventually tell her that he is not this Italian person that he is pretending to be. So if they replaced this, the probably 10 minutes where they focus on Dave's parents' relationship and having the baby off of a stupid sentence that Dave said well, about Italian families being 
big families, it just, they could have taken that and replaced it with more of Dave and Kathy getting to know each other and having a relationship because her reactions just seem a little bit over the top when she gets upset because to me, it felt like they only known each other for like a couple of days because the time in this doesn't actually, like it doesn't seem like there's a lot of time. You don't, you don't get a great sense of how long is, what is happening in between, like, you know what I mean. And so for the clip, it was very, very easy for me to choose one for this. I used to watch a lot of Tour de France with my dad, which funnily enough is currently on its, starting its second week as of today. But to me, it was really interesting seeing the hand signals that the truck driver is doing when he is pacing Dave. But I thought that was such a fun part of the film that I couldn't help but add it. Because I mean, I could have chosen some of the racing scene, but this one I just felt like was a little bit more interesting. That is all I have for Breaking Away. As always, these are just my opinions, but I'd love to know yours in the comments down below. Have you seen Breaking Away and did you enjoy it? If not, let me know why. And I mean, let me know your favorite sports movie. Is it Hoosiers? Which is another one I think is on the list and it's another Indiana movie, but it's about basketball. If you want to know which films I've already watched or just saw my progress along in general, there is a link in the description to a Google Doc that has every single film I've checked off so far. Or you can also check out my letterbox. I'm also an Amazon affiliate, so if you'd like to start the challenge for yourself, watch the movie I talked about today, or get ready for the movie I'm going to be talking about next time. You can check out any of the links in the description. If you purchase anything from there, I'll get a small percentage that'll help make this channel even better. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Tarantino's ninth film comes out the same weekend that the next 1001 episode will be coming out. So in honor of that, I will be checking off a Tarantino film I have not seen, which is most of them, but I will be checking off Pulp Fiction. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, truly do appreciate you, whoever you are. Let me know who you are in the comments down below and let's be friends. If you enjoyed this, leave a like and subscribe if you're new because I have talking about these movies, TV shows, make movie mystery, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you next time. Bye.